this is such a fun accessory to make. So I'm excited for you to join me for this. I've been wanting to have some more smaller purses or clutches to take when I don't want to take my entire bag, but I want it cute. I want it to look great with my outfit is an awesome accessory. Today I'll be using Dishy in the worsted weight. They keep coming out with more and more gorgeous colors. These are two new colors I discovered, so I'm excited to use them today. This one is the Inlet and this one is the Sunbaked. Both of them are awesome. It's 190 yards per 100 grams and this is 100% cotton, very washable. I really like it. Um, we will be using the size F 3.75 millimeter hook today. You will also want to have on handy a yarn needle and scissors to cut those ends. Stitch markers are amazing. I highly recommend having stitch markers for every project you start. And so I'm recommending that today as well. Then you see some other things here that are quite unique. Um, I have some magnetic snaps. They come in lots of different varieties. These are just some I found at my local Joann's store. There's more on Amazon. I'll be linking to some of those in my pattern. Um, these are great if you want something that closes and stays closed. So we're going to use some magnetic snaps today and see how those work for the clutch as well. And then I wanted to kind of dress it up a bit. Um, I love these tassels I came um, into. The, I mean, they just threw them in my car. I threw them in my car. I saw them and I threw them in my car. And so these um, were from Joann's and I thought this would be really cute possibly to do on the front as a little bit of an extra charm or even like on the side of a clutch to make it have just a little bit extra cuteness to it. You'll find so many fun things if you go through the jewelry aisles at Joann's and I tend to just throw in a few things each time I go. I also found these leather strips. These are a nice suede. I Another option for these is you could trim these across the front. These are just some ideas for you if you really want to change up your clutch and see um, if you can try a few different looks, um, it's really fun to go down craft aisles and, and think about what you could use to make something really unique in yours. And then I also picked up some almost thick like canvas fabric. This is a cotton fabric, but it's a little bit thicker, but it looks like it's going to be easy to get a needle into. So if you do want to line your clutch, I'm also going to show you how to do that as well. It'll add a little bit of um, stiffness to it. So it's, it uh, stays in place. And as well, if you happen to be like me and you're throwing in some lip gloss or anything else, and you want to make sure to keep uh, the integrity of your lip gloss. So if this gets dirty, doesn't matter. I don't want necessarily my lip gloss to touch the yarn. Although if it did, it'd be fine. It'd be washable. But if you want to reinforce your clutch, it's a good idea to get some fabric to line the inside. So let's go ahead and get started. Now this is a very adjustable pattern. I am making this the size I would like, but it's very easy for you to adjust the width and even the height of this um, bag. You can make it even bigger or smaller for coins, whatever you want to do. Uh, so I'm going to show you this dimension, but just know if you want to start by chaining more, that's totally fine. This repeat that we're doing can be any amount of stitches. So for this, I'm going to be chaining 28. So simply chain 28 and come on back. Or if you'd like to chain more or less, that's up to you as well. This is the width of the clutch. Now for row one, I am going to be working into the back humps of these chains. I prefer to do that because it makes a nice um, edge along the starting row. So in the first chain from the hook, I'm going to insert my hook into that back, that back hump of the chain, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through both loops on the hook, and then go ahead and insert your hook back into this bar yarn over and pull up a loop yarn over and pull through both the loops on the hook this is known as a stacked single crochet some people call it a stacked double crochet um, this is a great way to start your row the important thing about it though is to go ahead and mark this first stitch it's very easy to work the wrong spot on these when you're working back because sometimes we tend to work down the side of it which is not what we want so definitely mark the stacked single crochet then we're going to be working a herringbone double crochet across until the last stitch. So to work a herringbone double crochet, we're going to yarn over, insert into the next chain in the bottom hump, yarn over, pull up that loop, and then also pull that through the first loop on the hook, 
yarn over and pull through one, yarn over and pull through two, and that is a herringbone double crochet. Let's do that again. Yarn over and insert to the next chain, yarn over and pull through and pull through the first loop on the hook. Now that is going to be the trickiest part for you. I promise I struggled a few times with it, doing it as well my first few times. So just keep on practicing and going. Yarn over and pull through one loop on the hook, yarn over and pull through both loops on the hook to complete the stitch. Now, as you get going, it's, it's going to feel slow at first with the new stitch as it usually does, but you will find, I promise you'll find, you can increase your speed once you get the flow and the tension of being able to slide through that first loop on the hook. Now we're going to work the herringbone double crochet stitch all the way across until the last stitch in the row. Now that we've come to the last chain in the row, I'm simply going to double crochet into that last chain. I like to do so because it helps have a little bit more straighter edges versus working a herringbone double crochet into that last stitch. And now we're going to go ahead and turn our work and we're going to start row two the same way we did before. We're going to start by doing this very first stitch as a stacked single crochet. So I'm going to insert my hook into that very first stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through both the loops on the hook. Go ahead and insert your hook back into that bar, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through both the loops. And now we have our stacked single crochet. And yes, such a good idea to go ahead and mark this stitch now. Now we're going to work the herringbone double crochet into the next stitch and into each stitch across until we get to that very last stitch. And then we will double crochet into that very last stitch. And now in that very last stitch, we can go ahead and move our marker and then just do a double crochet stitch into the last stitch of this row. And now we are simply going to repeat row two for the amount of rows we want to make the size of clutch that we want. So this is a really simple and fun repeat. We're just simply making a large rectangle fabric of this herringbone double crochet. So go ahead and repeat row two, and then we'll come on back and talk about how to turn this into a clutch. Now I'm sure you're wondering how we're going to take a rectangle and turn it into a clutch. And what we'll do is we'll fold up the bottom about just over two thirds of this, and then the top flap will fold over and we'll secure that. Now at this point, this will be the size of your clutch, but if you wanted to make it taller, you can add more rows. And if you wanted to make it wider, that's where we would chain a few more chain stitches on our first row. Now let's talk about what we're going to do about these edges. Now notice, especially on the sides, we have a lot of rigid edges going on here, and we wanna make sure that we can get that a bit more flat and make it look nice. So what we're going to do next is we are going to slip stitch around the entire rectangle, and we will also chain one on the corners. Chaining one on the corners is really helpful, and then we will slip stitch two slip stitches per row on the sides and one stitch per stitch on the other side. So slip stitch all the way around and then come on back. After working all the way around the perimeter of this, you can go ahead and slip stitch a join or fasten off and do a seamless join. Now, notice on mine, it's not perfect. It doesn't need to be perfect, but these slip stitches will make it look better as we keep moving forward. So we can go ahead and weave in our ends, and now we just simply have a rectangle. Honestly, this could also be used as a dishcloth, making it slightly bigger. Like, it's a great stitch. I love the texture on it. So now let's weave in our ends and then we'll talk about what we're going to do next. Now, if you want to block this piece, this is a great point of this project to block it. But I will say I don't recommend a complete wet block because this is a cotton yarn. Um, it will take forever to dry. So either steam it or simply spray it slightly damp and let it block. Um, then the next steps that we'll be doing is lining it. Now you don't have to line this, but I'm going to push you a little bit on that because if you do line it, it ends up being a better clutch that I think you'll use more. 
I think it's just more usable and it's also um, a bit firmer. So let me show you what I've done so far. This is a piece of canvas fabric. I've ironed it. I cut it about a half inch to an inch wider than all my sides. And then I folded each side in and ironed it, making sure it would fit inside the crochet piece that I had worked up. What this will do is, let me show you, it will make your piece a lot stiffer and also more usable. I think I'll hesitate less throwing keys or anything else inside of this, knowing it's not going to snag my yarn and it's going to keep a nicer piece longer. So after you have cut your piece of canvas and you've ironed it, I think it makes it easier if you do iron it, go ahead and place this. You have your right side of your fabric. We're going to flip that. So we have the wrong side of our fabric facing. We're going to place our canvas, the right side of our canvas. So all these folded edges will be touching the wrong side of our fabric and then grab a needle and thread and simply whip stitch as you can see I've done here just whip stitch all the way around the edge this will be on the inside so it doesn't have to be perfect but whip stitch that to it and then you have like a thicker piece of fabric here that is amazing for a clutch now I just want to mention before this next step of whip stitching this canvas to your crochet is if you are using this type of closure this magnetic closure that has the prongs you will want to attach it to the inside of your canvas so you're going to have to cut some holes in your canvas before stitching it onto your crochet item so you'll simply cut a couple holes slide these prongs through and then secure it to the canvas and then stitch it on same thing however over here pretending like we're going to be folding this up because this is what we will be doing you will want to attach this before stitching it because I don't know that it's going to go through both surfaces it might only be able to go through the crochet piece which is fine because we will be seaming these together it'll be quite sturdy but you'll want to go ahead and attach this before you seam so attach one edge to just the crochet and then the other edge to the canvas about where they're going to meet up when you go ahead and close this and that way you can use this type of closure now this next step is what's really going to make this take shape. What we will do is we will fold up this bottom part and this part will be the actual size of like the inside of this clutch and then you can fold down the top. You can play with it a little bit to see how you decide the dimensions. You could go ahead and move this a bit more and have this top be a bit more narrow or if you even want to do it almost half and half you can do so too. So this is really up to your personal preference. It's a really easy step. We're simply going to fold and then check it to see if we like where this will fold down and then grab your crochet hook. So we're going to leave the piece like this. We'll fold this down later. This will come later. But for now, we're just looking at this where this bottom part is folded up. We have all of our slip stitches here on the edges. We're going to go ahead and we're going to join through the back loop only of the slip stitches along the edge on both sides of the fabric right here. We're going to be slip stitching these together. So we're going to join through the back loop and then the front and then the front loop. So we're just grabbing the back loop and the front loop from each edge here and we're going to join with our yarn. Do a little slip stitch and now I'm just going to slip stitch across here going through the back loop and the front loop and slip stitch those together. This is what will join the edges together so that it looks more like a clutch. I'm going to be working this all the way around to here up to here and then I'll just work this top part by itself. Well let me show you how that's done. So after slip stitching the last stitches together, as far as this is folded up, now I'm simply going to continue to slip stitch in the front loop only all the way around through those slip stitches. It will just help add a nicer edge to this piece. I'm going to slip stitch all the way around and I always love to chain one on the corners 
because it makes them a lot more sharp than just trying to make it a rounded corner. If you want a more rectangle corner instead of a rounded corner, sharp corner, go ahead and chain one on the corners. So I'll get to this point of my corner and I'll simply just chain one and then keep on going. So as we get back around to this other side, we'll want to go ahead and work through the back loop of the row that's closest to us and the front loop of the row that's farthest away from us. And we want to slip stitch those together so that it makes a nice join and a nice seam. It joins these two edges together. So once you've made it to the other side, we can go ahead and fasten off and weave in those ends. And one of the last steps is your embellishments, which is so much fun. You can do a lot of different things here. Um, if you're like me and you have a lot of craft supplies, now is the time to just go through them all and see what might work. So for this, I went ahead and I added a suede leather strap. I had these um, in my collection, these double cap rivets. These are great for stuff like this. I punched a hole in the suede I cut and then I simply attached them to the inside here. So as it folds over, it's a nice handle if you want more of a wristlet. So, you know, if you're moving around and you don't want to have to hold it, you can just drop it and have it on your wrist. So that's an option. Not not mandatory this is really where it gets creative to you and your lifestyle um i also have these magnets that i'm going to stitch on the inside i could do one in the center or if i really want to make sure it's secure as a wristlet i'll probably do two and these i'll simply stitch to the canvas and then to the crochet part you know i am in love with this pattern i've made three clutches i just think they're so much fun and then i also have these for different outfits and different styles they open up quite easily with these magnetic closures. I want to show you these ones too. I ended up ordering some on Amazon. I found them a little bit less expensive than the craft store with a ton of varieties of different magnetic closures. I was able to put these on even after I closed the um, canvas part of this simply by using some scissors and poking some holes in order to uh, get those magnets in but i do really like them they close nice and easy and it's really really nice i'll put the link for these fasteners in the description if you find one doesn't stick it's good to just clamp it down with a pair of pliers and then it will stay together a bit better but these are so much fun i hope you've enjoyed this project be sure to hit that subscribe button and come back for more fun projects soon